Alright, good afternoon. We are up here in uh, northern Japan, up in the Tohoku region, and it is late summer. Just the heat of the summer started to break, and fall is just around the corner. And what that means for us is chestnuts, or in Japanese, kuri. Okay, these little chestnut things here. All right, they're absolutely delicious, easy to pick, easy to cook. We're going to show you a little bit how to do that here. Uh, here in uh, Japan, up here with the uh, with the countryside kind of emptying out, there's a lot of chestnuts and walnuts and persimmon, lots and lots of uh, pretty much wild fruit, uh, wild trees, wild nuts out here. And but our property here has been blessed with probably you know 10 walnut trees, so uh, walnut trees and maybe about six or seven of these uh, kuri trees, these chestnut trees. Yeah, it does have a hole. So we're going to go ahead and take a look at this. And uh, just to get, this is going to be a quick video. Chestnuts are really easy. They're easy to pick up, easy to tell if they're good or bad. Uh, this isn't a cooking channel, so we're not going to go over the uh, any uh, any uh, recipes or anything. Uh, but just want to show you what we're looking at and how easy it is to do this. So let's go ahead and uh, get started here. All right, here we are on our uh, little farm. And my assistant today is young Kyle. Kyle, what do you got there? You got chestnuts, could he? All right, so here we have, this is the, uh, the, raw, the raw chestnuts as they come down off the tree. We'll show you what that looks like before because you got to get them out of their shell, if you will, out of the husk. And we'll show you how to cook these later. And again, this is super, super easy. But what you're looking for here Let's get a good sized one here because what you're looking for is uh, not too dark this one has a little bit of dark discoloring up here so we'll watch that when we peel it but generally you want a nice good clean nut color okay and you're also going to look for uh, look for holes okay and we'll, we're going to talk about that here in a second okay so these, these are some good ones um, you want to get bigger ones you know if they're too small they're probably that's you know this one's a you know, this one's on the smallish side, uh, but still, you know, well worth the uh, uh, well worth the effort to cut and, and uh, to, to pick and to eat. Okay, but they are a little bit of effort here, so you don't want to have to waste your time on ones that are too small. So you know, this one here, that's a that's a good big chestnut that is going to be delicious. And uh, you know, we've got a whole. This is just from this morning. Okay, so coming out here and picking it, and I'll show you how to pick these here. Um, here in a second but uh, wonderful wonderful natural harvest we don't really do anything to keep the trees uh, you know to tend to them so this is minimal minimal effort that we have to get these chestnuts okay here come over here now it, so a lot of times these chestnuts are uh, uh, a lot higher okay and we're gonna try to get this here Okay, there we go. Here's what they look like up on the tree. Okay, and there's these spiny outer husks, these shells, okay? Now when these chestnuts are ready to pick, ready to eat, they'll fall. Okay, now some of them might be uh, low enough that you can reach up and grab them. And we're going to talk about that here in a second. Uh, or if you have got like a, you know, a fruit picking shear that you can reach up and grab them. Um, you can get them before the, the bugs or the weevils get to them. But generally speaking, you're going to be picking them off the ground. And this is what you're going to be looking at. Okay, and I grabbed a couple here just to demonstrate. Okay, here is the chestnuts as they're coming off the ground here, okay? And they're kind of, they're in this spiny husk. Now, don't underestimate these, these spines, okay? They will poke you, okay? Uh, even cotton gloves, they'll, they'll go right through. Now, these little spines are really, really prickly. Okay, so don't underestimate that. So if you have a pair of gloves, and I got a pair of gloves here in a second, but there's a real easy way to, to get these out of the shell. I'm going to show you that here right now. So, you know, if you're out here and you got your shoes on, okay, just come right up here, stand on both sides of it, and you're just going to, going to squish them apart like this. Okay, you just stand on both sides. Okay. And just squish it apart like that. Once you got it out a little bit, you can just reach in, reach right in here and grab these guys. And again, what we're looking for is we're looking for any hull, uh, holes or if they're looking for any mildew or rot or anything. This one's beautiful. Okay, no holes. Looks beautiful. Okay, a lot of times you, you got to inspect each one. 
um, because if you don't, one of them might have a hole. You gotta watch for that, okay? But this this one looks beautiful, okay? So here's three three more good ones. Kyle, you wanna take that over there and put it in the bucket? Thank you. Okay, now, before we get into this one, I wanna get take a close-up look. Okay, you see all this uh, rot type stuff here? It's not really rot, what it is is, there we go. That's what I wanted to look for. Okay, see it kinda looks like a bug got in there? Well, that's exactly what happened. See this hole? Okay, that's what you're looking for. That has already been uh, chewed on by a chestnut weevil. And there's a scientific name for it, and you can Google that if you want. But it's a weevil that focuses, that lives off chestnuts. Okay, and there's that hole. So this is no good, so you want to toss that away. And you can kind of see in the husk here where it uh, got a start on you there. Now this one was right next to it. Okay, but the weevil left this one. Okay, the weevil left this one. Okay, this was right next to the other one that had the hole in it, uh, but this one's good. Okay, it's okay, gonna you're gonna want to wash it off, right? Because it kind of it was next to the the bug and everything. Drop the thing here. So you want to look closely to make sure there's no no bug holes in it. But that looks like a good one. Now there's two. Let's go ahead and uh, open this third one here. See what we got. Okay. Okay, now I haven't opened that up, but see this little bit of a uh, little bit of debris here. Looks like a weevil might have gotten in. Yep, exactly. And you can see, had it up here. Sorry about that. So you can see, now uh, this one also got uh, gotten by the weevil. Okay, now these weevils are quick. This chestnut fell last night and it's already been hacked. Okay, so this is uh, not good. We'll toss that one away. Check the others in the batch. Okay, and this one is good. Weevil did not get to this one, so that's good. And then this one, a nice plump one. Now, if you're picking these earlier in the season, sometimes you'll get them up where it looks like it's a half-inflated bag, um, you know, and uh, you don't want those either. So, you know, if it looks like a nice plump nut, then uh, that's what uh, that's what you're looking for. Okay, a and uh, nut or? You no, know, that's a walnut. Okay, we'll do a video on walnuts later. Okay, but there we go. We got three good uh, good chestnuts here. Now, what I wanted to do is show you. Okay, so we'll add those to the to the bucket. But I also want to show you the competition. Okay. Now here's a, you know, this is a glove I use uh, when I'm, you know, trying to get this done a little bit faster. Again, a cotton glove, these spines will go right through that cotton glove. So get yourself a, you know, a rubber glove. Okay. So here's the husks when it's fully open. Okay. Inside there's no spines, so you can, you know, kind of carefully grab it. Again, these little spines aren't a, aren't a joke. They're not going to injure you, but a bunch of little needles. Yeah. But I wanted to show you your competition. Okay. Oh, also, uh, a lot of times when you're open, you'll get these little half-formed chestnuts. Obviously, they're no good, uh, but you'll want to look. You'll want to toss those away. Okay. And then I grabbed a couple more here that had holes in it, just to show you what you're looking for. You're looking for that hole. Now, here is your competition. Okay. This. Make sure I get my light right here. This is a chestnut weevil now they uh they play possum okay so this one's very much alive but he's being handled so he's kind of gone into into please leave me alone go away oh, there he woke up okay this is a chestnut weevil see that long hose like thing on the yeah. end of his yeah. nose yep that's what he drills into your chestnuts with okay that is your competition <laughs> yep, and he dropped. No, that's fine. They don't fly. They don't even move all that fast, and they don't bite you either. Okay, they're pretty harmless for us uh, for us humans. He's not gonna bite. Nope, he's not gonna bite us. And if he does, I'll let you know here right now. But see that little? Uh, if I can get around here. Okay, see that nose on him? That yeah. nose is what they use to chisel into the chestnut. And a chestnut doesn't have very strong shell, so. Uh, they don't uh, really have a problem with that, but that's your competition. You see, there's another one down in here. Okay, there is a smaller one. Where'd he go? Oh, there, there he is. 
little tiny guy. Okay, we'll scoop him up in here. There we go. There's an itty bitty one. Okay, so that first one was really big. This one's really small. So these are hard to spot. Okay, you got to kind of really look for them. But if you look closely there, you can see that little needle nose, and that's what they're using to drill into your chestnut. Yeah, a little nose there, huh? Okay, now these guys hatch in the spring and they infest down at the base of the um, crawling through my hair there. It feels kind of weird. Get him back down here. There we go. So he, uh, these guys hatch in the spring and they live in the foliage and the dead debris at the base of your chestnut tree. <laughs> it looks like Aya, yeah. Okay. And they'll just eat leaves and bark and stuff like that and live until the chestnuts come out. And then they'll drill into the chestnut and lay their eggs in there. And the eggs will hatch out and peek on little grubs and the cycle continues. Uh, but that's your competition. That's what's drilling into. And so they're already at the base of your chestnut trees. So if you are trying to get a decent harvest of chestnuts, then you need to come out every day and pick up your chestnuts because they are you know your enemy here is already waiting to steal your chestnuts from you okay so if you wait like i said the, the the these guys here i picked all the chestnuts yesterday and this is what came down this morning and they're already a good amount of them are drilled into okay so these guys are quick and they're waiting for it okay let's get the other one here like i said these guys aren't dangerous whoop let's scare a little guy Okay, these are, you know, they're not going to hurt you. Okay, there we go here. You now he's a, uh, there we go. Okay, they'll grab onto my finger there. Okay, but, you know, they're not, they're not dangerous. They're not going to hurt you. But that nose just drills right through the chestnut. So that's your competition there. So that's what you're trying to beat. Uh, what? How, where are we going to put that? Where are we going to put it? Well, we're going to get rid of these guys because these guys are stealing our chestnuts. You got a big one there, a little one over here. Okay, he's got a little bit of a grip on my finger there. He doesn't particularly like being handled. Okay, but he's gonna like even Papa, less what his future has this? for him. What? How are you adapting? There we go, there's a good view of him. So there you go. Papa, what? I'm taking you on school. Yeah. Okay, I'm gonna do this all right folks so we have gotten our chestnuts out of their holes and inside we got them rinsed off here uh, cooking these uh, chestnuts are actually really really easy there's there's a few ways to do it you can do it over a fire over a grill we're just going to do it in the oven here um, but you do want to soak these in water for maybe 20 minutes to an hour these have been soaking for maybe about 45 minutes and that's just so that the water uh, gets into the shell uh, and gives it a little bit more steam so it opens so it pops uh, a little bit easier okay uh, you do want to wash these off too uh, because of course these were on the ground and you know bugs probably crawled on them so you know give them a good wash and then let them sit in uh, water let them soak for about uh, you know 20 minutes uh, to an hour uh, I mean you can go for a couple hours but you know don't leave them overnight you don't want to waterlog them um, but uh, these are ready to go now for cutting them, there's also several different ways. Now, this is really forgiving. These chestnuts are very, very forgiving. So, you know, if you have a different way you want to try it, by all means, it'll, it'll almost certainly work. These are very forgiving. Now, for me, I take the, there's a little on these, uh, on these chestnuts, there's this little tip here. Okay, it's a little bit, well, yeah, a little bit sharp, won't poke you. But I like to take those off. Okay, uh, I've seen some people take them off, some people don't. I like to take that little tip off because after you cook it, it gives a little place so you can get your thumbnail on under it and, uh, and peel. Okay. The other thing that you'll see uh, with, with uh, cutting the chestnuts is it's very common. People will say, go ahead and put a criss cut, put a cross cut around the, the chestnut so you can peel it. Uh, I've seen some people use a clamshell, recommend a clamshell. So they'll start here, start at the bottom part of the mm -hmm. shell and cut all the way around so it pops open like a clamshell. Um, I personally like doing the clamshell cut, but I put another cut right here on this top side. The curvature of the shell is enough that if you don't, then when you go the the when you go to peel it, um, it'll kind of hold on to the shell a little bit, onto the meat. Okay, and if you've eaten chestnuts before, you know that they are very crumbly. Um, they like to fall apart. So anything you can do to kind of reduce the chances of them falling apart will help you. And I already did this one. 
Okay, so I took the cut the tip off, and then I cut a little uh, slit, a little clamshell slit all the way around, and then I put one here on the top, and that's just to make it easier to peel without it uh, falling apart too easily. Okay, um, as always, you are using a knife, so um, you know you you know be careful. No, make sure you you know you're using a sharp knife. Um, your grandfather probably told you, and he's right, that a dull knife uh, will hurt you more often than a sharp knife, okay? So you just cut along here. Now, you'll see some people try to cut here. Um, that works better with a serrated knife, um, but if you don't have a serrated knife, then just you know get in here, use the tip to kind of make an incision, pop that out like that, and then like I said, I make another cut right here. So what'll happen is, is I'll have this flat side will pop off, then I'll have two more parts that just pop off. And we'll show you here that after we get done uh, cooking this. Okay, so I got, a, I got some cutting to do here. Uh, get, these, uh, get these all ready and then I'm gonna pop them in the oven. Super simple, 20 minutes at 400 degrees and these will pop right open. I'll show you that here in a minute. Now, we don't get too fancy with our chestnuts. Okay, this isn't a cooking channel. Um, you can definitely uh, you know, get into balsamic vinegars and, and olive oil and sea salt and all that stuff. And the, that just makes it delicious. We uh, keep it relatively simple and we just, uh, we bake it, like I said, for that 20 minutes. And then we eat it just fresh out of the shell. Now, uh, after you cook it, you know, you can let it, you know, cool down, maybe eat it the next day. But eating it fresh out of the oven or off the fire uh, is the best way to eat these. Eating these things fresh and warm um, they're absolutely delicious like i said be a little bit careful when you're uh, uh cutting with your knife um, these are small and they're hard to get a hold of and after you do you know 50 or 60 or 100 of these things uh, your hand will start to get tired and you don't want to slip and cause yourself a problem and these are nut shells right um, so they don't cut super super easily so just be careful what you're doing go slow you get the hang of it uh, if you got a, a cutting knife now this one, this one's a little bit flat on both sides. It doesn't have that round curvature. So I'm curious to see the condition of the nut inside because it didn't really fill out like a bloom, but I'm gonna make a fourth cut on the other side. Just to make it easier to peel once it pops open. Okay, I'll go ahead and finish uh, uh, you know, putting the cuts on these things. And we'll get it in the oven, like I said, 20 minutes at 400 degrees. Should be more than sufficient and we'll see how they turn out. Go ahead, tear into it. All right, here's our roasted uh, oh, chestnuts. Big. What? Big. Oh, oh yeah, that's a good size one. All right, here we are. After you uh, cook them, like I said, uh, 200 degrees for uh, 20 minutes, the shell peels back like this, and then you can just peel it. Now, Joe, show, show them here the inner. Here, let me. Joe just peeled one here. I got the iron. Oh, hold on. Hold on. Do it. I'll help you in a minute. Okay. So this, uh, the chestnuts have this inner uh, shell, this inner skin. And some people are, I think, are a little sensitive to it maybe. Um, but they, uh, if, you, if you eat it raw, if you eat it raw, it's really, really tannic. It's really difficult to eat. And uh, if, you're, if you're peeling it, if you can get that off, that's fine. I've actually found that it's way too much trouble to get this inner skin off. And so when I roast it like this at that 20 minutes, all that tannic taste, all that tannic, uh, you know, that bitter taste goes away. And I just eat that inner skin. Okay. If you don't like it, then go ahead and worry. Uh, you know, you can worry the nut out of there uh, as best you can. It'll crumble and fall apart. But to me, it's not worth it. What, what do you got, Ayanna? There you go. All right, Anna, here. Here's one. And there's Ty got. But there you go. That's how easy chestnuts are. And like I said, you can uh, you can look at some recipes online and, you know, get some uh, olive oil and some sea salt. And you can go all, uh, uh, you know, fancy chef on this stuff. But my kids absolutely love to eat them just raw. Or not raw, but, you know, cooked. But, you know, just straight out. But, uh, you know, sprinkle a little salt on if you like, a little uh, show you maybe even, a little soy sauce, uh, not too heavy. Uh, but yeah, there you go. Cook chestnuts off our own trees. And as you can see, the kids are... Uh, hello. Hello. 
just fine Hello. with it. Hello. 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 Say hi, Kyle. Hi. There's Emmy. Mm. All right. And they, oh, there's a good one. Nice. Oh, good job, Emmy. Thank you. Aya. Oh, yep. That was Aya. <laughs> Emmy's over here. All right. Awesome. Good job, Kyle. All right. So go grab yourself some chestnuts. Cook them up. Kids love them. Healthy for you, too. <laughs>